Hey there, welcome to M Level 3's P7 composite lid manufacture. We're going to be producing a, a composite lid for your P6 toolbox project along with a U channel to fit uh, in the base to hold your deep sockets. We're going to start by cleaning our countertops and prepping the area so that we can put down all of our fabric and materials. Uh, then we're going to lay out a piece of plastic in the first steps towards building our vacuum bag. Uh, we're going to lay the paper, uh, piece of plastic down and we're going to perimeter it with the uh, sealing tape. Notice how he's overlapped the corner so that we make sure we get a perfect seal all the way around. Now he's going to place the mold in the center of the plastic, expose each of the sections of, gr of yellow uh, sealing tape. He's going to create a pleat. That's the part he's just made. And he's going to line those pleats up with the corners or the edges of our mold. That'll allow excess bagging material to be formed in there so that everything can be pulled nice and tight. Notice when he's finished, he's covering the exposed material up with the uh, leftover tape. He'll do that all the way around. Okay, now we're going to put the uh, bagging material on. So we're going to open up one of those little sections of cover, and we're going to overlap the bag about a half an inch. Notice he started up in the top right-hand corner. He's got a half inch at the top and a half inch on the right. He's going to slowly peel away the tape a section at a time. He's going to go up halfway up the uh, pleat, still having the other side covered. He's going to pinch it tightly as he goes over the top and he's going to run it down the other side of the pleat. Now, if you went too quick and suddenly ended up with a whole bunch of wrinkles, we can't have wrinkles. They'll allow um, the air to get inside the bag. So give the plastic a quick tug so that you disconnect from the sealing tape and reattach it. As you're going along, you notice again, he's going slowly a piece at a time, up one side of the pleat, down the other. He's going to work his way across, maintaining that half inch. He's got to have the half inch to keep everything square as he's going along. Okay, so now he's going to work his way down the right-hand side, and again, he's showing you don't don't let it pull to the left or to the right. You've got to keep it nice and square. Work our material down the uh, ceiling tape. Now, if you were to suddenly get down and pull the uh, tape off your pleat, and for some reason the pleat got folded down, it's probably not worth fighting with it to try and get it back up. So what we're going to do is just make ourselves another quick pleat. We'll put that on top and continue on with the sealing process. So again, making sure he's getting a perfect seal, no wrinkles, so that there's no way we're going to lose vacuum. Keeping everything nice and square with that half inch overlap as he goes along. Now he's going to go to the far side. He's got about two inches of overlap this time, and so as he works his way down, he's got to keep everything square, keeping that two inch overlap consistent so that we end up with the same amount of material going across the bottom of the bag. So again, he's making sure that he's keeping everything perfectly square and perfectly flat so we don't end up with any potential leak spots. Yeah, down the first pleat, onto the second pleat, up one side, pinch it nicely as he goes over the top. Now he's going to get to the very end. He's going to do his last little bit of sealing after he's done the three edges. And he's going to make sure that the bottom of the uh, panel remains open because he wants to be able to take the mold once we get it all set up, slide it in, and then we'll seal the bottom. The next step in the process is going to be uh, covering our mold so that we're protecting it from the epoxy. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take our uh, 14 by 16 piece and we're going to put it long ways and place down a piece of 2 inch uh, tape. We're going to connect it to the uh, top edge of the paper. We're going to fold up the bottom. We're going to pull the top over to make sure that we get a nice general overall seal. Make sure that's down nice and tight. Then we're going to fold the ends in just like you're folding a present. So take some tape, put it on the side of the counter so you've got something to work with. Fold your ends in nice and tight. Put your little piece on the end to seal the, the top edge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that those other folds are completely sealed as well. We don't want that epoxy getting inside there. Once we get that done, we're going to be moving on to the next step. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to put some uh, breather bleeder into the bottom of our vacuum bag so that the uh, uh, vacuum bases have got something to uh, work with. Uh, we're going to grab our two vacuum bases, separate them, make sure they're clean, put one base in one corner and the other base into the other corner, again making sure they're nice and clean, and then we're going to make sure that the actual uh, top units with the rubber seals, that they're in good shape, nice and clean and ready for installation. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get one corner and we're going to make sure that the plastic sits nice and flat and tight. We're going to get an X-Acto blade and we're going to put a little cross into the top of the uh, cut or just cut that in so that we've got the ability to drop now the top base in. We're going to do it up snug, but we're not going to do it up super tight at this point yet. We'll do exactly the same thing on the other corner. 
uh, and again fit that in make sure that we've got a, uh, a reasonable seal. Now we're going to make a wedding envelope so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the long piece of plastic that we've got we're going to fold it in half crease it so we know where the halfway mark is get ourselves a couple of little pieces of tape we're going to just generally secure the four corners just holding it kind of in a, a good square so that uh, we can then actually seal it down a little bit better. We're gonna, yeah, there we go, put them into the four corners. We're gonna get some additional two inch tape and we're gonna seal the edges. This is gonna protect the countertop uh, as well as just making sure that we, we don't end up having that move around us on us while we're doing our wedding. So there we go, secure the front edge and we're pretty much organized with our wedding envelope, which is great. Now, what we're going to do is we're ready to mix. So we're going to get the correct A and B ratio uh, by weight, our two epoxies, and we're going to uh, mix B into A. B is a little more runny, so we'll run that one into the uh, A cup. We'll make sure we get every last little bit of it out so that we keep that ratio as close as we can to the uh, manufacturer's specification. We're going to spend a good solid two solid minutes of uh, mixing. We're going to keep an eye on the clock on the wall. Uh, make sure that we're, we're abiding by the full two minute uh, time and once we're done we're going to clean that uh, um, stick off, put it in the side and we're ready to start wetting things out. The first material going down is carbon fiber. It's hard to tell when the carbon fiber is fully wetted out so we're going to basically lay down some epoxy and we're going to put the carbon fiber into the epoxy. So we're going to lay it in there and uh, get ready to uh, put the lid down and then we're going to actually work the epoxy up and through the carbon fiber. This is a great way of being able to tell that we know that carbon fiber is properly wetted out. You can see he's working it into all the corners, making sure it's got a nice even coat everywhere and that every little spot has got some uh, good amount of epoxy. Gently peel the lid back. Now we got to watch the fibers, especially with carbon fiber. They like to shed the uh, fibers, but take our time when we're peeling it back. Give the new piece another little shake out. So this is our first layer of carbon fi or uh, fiberglass. We're going to make sure that the, uh, the cut points all match up really well. We're going to put down a little bit of epoxy. He's just kind of spreading it out a little bit before he covers the lid. There we are. Gets the squeegee. Now he's going to take some time and really work it in. Now we're going to put down three layers of glass doing exactly the same process each time. And so you can see he's working it in making sure that we have no white spots. Uh, that white spot would tell us that we've got an area of uh, very low um, epoxy wet out. So we, again, kind of chase after it to make sure that we get that full wetting out. And when the glass is fully wetted out, it, we're going to see the material underneath, which is going to be the carbon fiber. So again, he's being careful to watch fibers as he's uh, pulling the uh, wetting layer off. Going to get it up on the plenum. He's going to get his last piece of fiberglass. Again, shake it, make sure it's clean, no fod, no... Uh, uh, potential inclusions on there and we're going to lay it in. Put down a little bit of epoxy and we're going to get the squeegee and start working it in. Again, as we get into the, the deeper and deeper layers we're going to find there's probably a little bit residual epoxy. Wetting actually happens fairly quick uh, but again we really want to take our time and make sure that each and every layer gets fully wetted out. So he's, he's watching. Sometimes the uh, more layers you put on it seems it, it doesn't tend to darken out quite as much and that's because we've got more material between us and the carbon fiber and so uh, he's going to put a little bit more weight into this one because we're going to try and push out some of the excess epoxy. We're probably a little heavy and so he's just going to work all of the uh, uh, excess epoxy off towards the top of the uh, uh, build up here. Okay I think he's happy so now we're going to uh, again carefully pull that top cover off and then what we're going to do is we're going to follow this up with our peel ply. The peel ply is actually going to be the first layer that's going to lay down on top of our mold, having the carbon fiber on the very top. So he's just going to lay it down, no epoxy needed, and uh, he's going to start uh, cutting the, the, the pack up or the build up uh, with his scissors. So we're actually going to cut just a perimeter around it, almost making like our own prepreg. So. You can see he's trimming the edge, trim it off, and then throw out all of the materials that have got epoxy on it right into the garbage. So now we're ready to uh, lay our mold down, and we're going to take our build up and we're going to lay it over top with the peel ply down. We're going to match up the cuts in the corners with the top corners of the mold so that we end up with the right amount of uh, material hanging over the front, giving us our latch. Don't have too much material hanging off the back. Make sure it's moved forward. 
Now, what we've got to do is we've got to get rid of that bottom layer of plastic that we had in the wedding envelope. So we're going to get an X-Acto and we're going to just very carefully work our way under the corner and peel that, uh, that layer of plastic off the top. Okay, so into the garbage and what we're going to do next is get uh, some uh, perforated ply. We're going to very carefully lay that down, putting the excess at the front to allow us to wrap around that front edge. Uh, we're going to trim in the four corners out of 45. That's going to allow us to have a better fold uh, at each of the corners. So we're going to make sure we do that on all four of the corners. A little trim, that's good. And then we're going to work those little corners around so that uh, the material folds in on itself. We're going to finish up with our breather bleeder. Again, position it so that it lays properly over the material. Uh, and we're going to work our way into our vacuum bag now. Be super careful putting it into the vacuum bag. We want to make sure that front edge remains perfectly clean because we're going to have to get a proper seal. Now center it with the front lip facing you. That way we can work that front lip once the vacuum uh, starts. So we're going to get rid of our gloves at this point because we want to be working in a completely clean environment. Uh, and we're going to start uh, sealing down that front edge. Again, we need to keep uh, an even overlap along the front edge. And so uh, he's going to start a little bit there. We're going to work our way across, make sure that we've got exactly the same amount of overlap as we move along. Uh, in this case, when he pulls it up, he's going to find out that he's just a little short of material. And that's okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, last piece of paper that protects the sealing tape, we're going to pull it off, and then we're going to attach the plastic from the far end here back towards our pleat. We can always roll our pleat down a little bit if it's, we're a little short, and if we're a little long along the bottom, we can also add another little pleat. So keep that in mind, because ultimately we've got to have that perfect seal. See how he's making sure everything stays super nice and flat, so that we get that perfect seal. He's going to just roll up the edge of the, uh, the pleat there, and roll the top down, so that he's got an excellent seal all the way across. Okay, well, we're pretty much ready to start our vacuum process now. So we're going to make sure that we've got a nice even distribution of the plastic over top of our uh, mold. We're going to grab the uh, primary airline, plug it into the distributor. Okay, make sure that's latched properly. We're going to listen, push in the little valve on the end to make sure we can hear the vacuum running. And then we're going to put it into our uh, vacuum attachments. To, to uh, install it, make sure you give it a good solid push. Sometimes if you don't get it down enough, it doesn't actually lock and latch. To get the units off, you just lift up on that ring, she pops off. So again, make sure you've got a good solid connection there. So as the vacuum starts, good idea to just, you know, have a listen, uh, have a look around, make sure that, uh, that you're getting nice even distribution of the plastic and that there's no big hissing noises or anything that would lead you to believe you've got a massive leak. Uh, good idea, start tucking materials underneath that front lip because that front lip we need that material to roll in there to hold that front piece of uh, uh, buildup nice and tight on the mold. Again, make sure the lids or the top layer is nice and flat, and we're going to work it all the way down around the sides and make sure she's in really, really good shape. Okay, now's a good time. We can uh, tighten up our vacuum bases, listen for uh, leaks, we're, uh, run your finger around the outside edge, push down solidly, making sure that we're getting an excellent seal all across the unit. Uh, if you hear a hissing noise in one area, sometimes it's much easier just to find it with your ear. Go around, be super picky, get that perfect seal, because that's what we're looking for. Once we get it to the point where we're pretty happy, we're going to put in a vacuum gauge and we're going to see what kind of pressure we're getting. So pretty good vacuum on this, so obviously a good seal. Uh, we can see the little dots of uh, excess epoxy working their way up through our breather bleeder. Uh, and that pretty much means we've got a good seal and we're uh, at the end of the day. And so clean up your scissors, clean up all your stuff, uh, make sure your work area is nice, and go and help somebody else. Let's all get a really good seal. Tomorrow will be the P7 Day 2 project where we will add a sandwich construction to our lid and build the U-channel.